Hello Vinaka, I welcome you to another class uh, today. Uh, today we'll be looking at a year 13 register, language of law legalese. Now uh, these uh, registers are mainly for Fijian students, those who are studying in Fiji. So if this can help you in any other way in your learning, uh, you feel free to continue watching. Okay, first of all, language of law legalese, it relates to law and rules made by authority for the purpose of proper regulation of a community or society. The main purpose of language of law legalese is to inform, instruct or command. Furthermore, when you're looking at uh, the samples from previous uh, past year papers or your exam papers that you'll be sitting, you can look through the samples and you can make informed decisions whether it's there to inform you, to instruct you or command you. Now you're in year 13, so you will know the different words that I use to differentiate between the three. The next is the mode. How is it presented to you? Usually it is written. The source is language of law will be given to you through laws, constitution, or the penal code. The penal code is a system of legal punishment in a particular place. Moving on, we have the tone. Three main tone when it comes to language of law is it needs to be formal, authoritative, and commanding. There is to be no ambiguity. Everything has to be clear, precise, and concise. Moving on, there will be we will further be discussing sorry on the linguistic and the non linguistic features. Linguistic features always deal with words. So if you're looking at the jargon, sentence structure sentence structure, if you're looking at uh, the voice, passive or active, they will come under the linguistic features. First linguistic feature is the use of legalese or legal jargon. Example, affidavit. Legal jargons always gives the language a formal tone. So if the question comes, what is the purpose of the jargon? It gives the language a formal tone. Then we have use of commercialese, <clears throat> excuse me, or specialized vocabulary of the commercial or business world. For example, notice is hereby given. You can find that in language of business. We learned that last year in year 12. And also, you have it as well in language of law legalese. Third one is the use of archaic words. The archaic words are words that are no longer in use. For example, here unto, therefore, not therefore, sorry. The, thy. Once again, when looking at this, the samples, that you will uh, later attempt, you will see these words being used. And they are there to give the, the, the um, sample a formal tone. Next is the use of redundancy or extra words. Example, wherefore, therefore, for clarity and precision. The use of circumlocution or roundabout wording where few words could be used. Example, at the hour of 10 o'clock in the forenoon. Once again, forenoon, as in number three, it is a archaic word, words that are no longer in use or obsolete, instead of t at 10 a.m. So when we use circumlocution or roundabout, it is very tedious. It's adding more of what has already been said. But once again, language of law needs to be very precise. So this will have no ambiguity. Six, the frequent use of the conjunctions and and or for pre precise information. These words often are used as sentence beginners. Take note, this is not a typical feature. Number seven, passive voice construction to make the tone impersonal. Passive voice construction, O-V-S. The object, then you have your action word, the verb, then the subject. For any passive voice construction, it automatically becomes impersonal because the receiver of the action is taking precedence rather than the subject. Number eight is a sentence structure. It is usually compound or complex. Number nine is the use of proper nouns for specificity. It needs to be very precise or specific. That's why we have proper nouns. Examples of proper nouns are your names, where you live, where you stay, and titles of people. So proper nouns are always used for specificity. Then you have designation of authority. 
So if there is a stamp that shows that it comes from a certain lawyer or a certain courthouse, that is where we know it's the designation of authority. Moving on, we have the non-linguistic features. The first one is the use of numbers and figures. Why? It is to be specific and for referencing purposes. The use of case numbers or reference numbers. Now, many court proceedings happen in a day, in a month, in a week. So when you have a case number that is written, that means it is specifically just to that case. So these are for referencing purpose. Then you have parenthesis or parenthesis. This is for clarification. You have listing of enumeration. Sorry, listing or enumeration. This is for readability, easy for you to follow and read. And also the layout, where there is no ambiguity. Then you have bold print. Bold print is there for clarification and to attract readers' attention. And lastly, you have the stamp and seal. This is for authenticity and for referencing purposes. Thank you, class. That is all that I have for you today. And that was our discussion on language of law or legalese. Thank you.